19 COVID stories. Distancing relations, July 2020. That's far enough. Lindy, in dark sunglasses and pink jumpsuit, was sitting on the sun lounger, her arm raised. Alice thought her sister resembled a disabled aerobics instructor. The sun lounger was parked on the terrace that stretched along the back of the house, its attachable side table overladen with manicuring equipment, mineral water bottles, smartphone and tablet, evidence that Lindy had settled in for the duration. This had obviously been her centre of operations since the beginning of the outbreak three weeks before. As instructed by her sister, Alice had used the garden door to avoid going through the house. She had set up her neat little camping stool on the lawn, about three metres from the terrace, and the two sisters were now sitting opposite each other. I hope you've brought something to drink, because I obviously can't offer you anything. In answer, Alice took the flask of coffee out of her shoulder bag, waved it in the air, and then had to steady herself, the aluminium stool a little wobbly on the grass. Ah, good. So, how are you? Lindy was pouring herself a glass of water on the side table. I'm fine. Still free of the dreaded lurgy. Us too, thank goodness. In the pause that followed, the two sisters sipped their drinks. The spring day was warm. The sun shone brightly. The chattering of starlings in the apple tree behind Alice, which until that moment had provided a gentle ambient background, slowly petered out. This is so odd, isn't it? Alice's candid comment immediately cut the awkwardness of the situation. Lindy let out a peal of laughter. Absolutely bizarre. I wonder if all this social distancing nonsense is going to carry on, even when it's all over. Lindy was still laughing. Oh God, can you imagine? I find the worst part, bumping into a friend, is the bit where you say hello and goodbye. I mean, you're not allowed to shake hands, give a kiss on the cheek or even a hug. Instead, you stand there like an idiot. I'm certainly not doing that bloody stupid elbow thing. Lindy topped off her rant with an imitation of the elbow bump, which made both sisters laugh even more. Alice felt the sun warming the back of her neck. Thanks so much for asking me around, Lindy. Please, you're doing me a favour. I'm so sick of the telephone, and Skyping or Zooming is like having to have a relaxing conversation with someone else on a space station. Alice thought her sister was looking particularly well. The light tan, the hair tied back, the bright voice as it continued. Anyway... I'm glad you could take a little time off, at last. Things must be frantic at the hospital. Being a single middle-aged professional, Alice always jumped at the chance to talk about her work. It's terrible, Lindy. Really awful. The whole team, everyone, is giving their all, but it's just such a bloody slog. Her initial enthusiasm ebbed and she trailed off unable to articulate all she had seen in the last days. Yes, I can imagine. I actually feel pretty guilty just sitting here in the sun all day whilst you're giving everything at the front. We're all very proud of you. The compliment made Alice uncomfortable. She mumbled a thank you and took a sip of coffee. How's Robert? As if on cue, they heard the window terrace door behind Lindy slide open and her husband stepped onto the terrace. The theatrical entrance was matched by the costume. Everything striking about the man, his thick brown hair, his broad frame, his smart clothes, were eclipsed by a large white surgical mask clamped tightly onto the front of his face. Hello, Alice. You know you really shouldn't be here. Lindy flopped back against her sun lounger, crossing her arms, emitting an irritable sigh. For God's sake, Robert, she's sitting in the middle of the garden. Yes, and she's a doctor working in a high-risk environment. She should be self-isolating between shifts. I invited her, which is very irresponsible of you. She's my sister. It's all right. I've got to get back anyway. Alice had stood up. 
The husband and wife stopped arguing and turned their faces, the one masked, the other behind dark sunglasses, towards Alice. She quickly repacked her flask and closed the camping stall. I need to shower and pick up a few things anyway. My next shift starts in a couple of hours. Having won the argument, Robert became magnanimous in victory. I didn't mean to be rude, Alice. It's just that all health workers have to stay in isolation. No, really, it's quite all right. Robert ignored the interruption and continued his statement to the end. It would look pretty bad in the present circumstances if it came out that a doctor was sitting in the garden of a civil servant who works for the Ministry of Health. Alice could scarcely conceal her contempt for the man behind the mask, Robert Starling, whose sordid little one-night stand with her, still unknown to his wife and her sister, made him so pitifully fearful. Oh God, here we go, the awkward bit. Lindy had also stood up and now gave a comic little wave. Alice waved back. She couldn't say who had been more injured. The wife who had been betrayed or the sister who had betrayed her. The sister who enjoyed the day-to-day -day leisure of her privileged life, blissfully ignorant of the wrong done to her or the sister who worked endlessly in the muddle and the middle of an epidemic in an attempt at absolution. Alice picked up her camping chair and watched by the husband and wife made her way back across the lawn and out through the garden door.